but I'm hoping you're there to listen. Um, so this is kind of the 101 of the, the clay. So this is where a lot of information is. Um, then as you move across over here, you'll see the assembly line for the sinks. Um, again, we'll have to remember masks and social distancing as we go through the sink area. Um, over on the other side of the room, you'll see your storage shelves and some people will bring in their totes. There's already a couple of totes there. Um, you can leave your plasticine clay on a shelf over in here. You'll have a shelf for clay. Um, and in the back room, there's the um, children room. And that's where the pug clay is ready for you to work with every day. Um, over on that side of the room, I'll have the machine available. So I'm gonna start out seeing if I can um, arrange this to kind of point down at a pottery wheel. So you can kind of see this. Um, I may have to do some crowding or some crouching. Um, this is an electric wheel. It's no different than a kick wheel. It has splash guards from the video. Um, and also we'll have some clay tools. And typically it's um, turned off and it has a switch on the side of it where it will be turned on. So um, they will have electric um, foot pedals. And I don't know, it's a right-handed thing, but they will have a switch to turn it on and turn it off. Um, basically, it should be found clean and it should be left clean. So when you're working with this wheel, you don't want to clean up someone else's garbage, okay? So when you find a wheel, and again, clean is a relative term, but I do score some people's ability or inability to leave a place fairly clean. So splash guards have been rinsed out. They're, you, know, you wouldn't eat off of them. Um, there's no tools. The floor looks mm -hmm. clean. This is a little further away from the wall, but um, it's ready to go. So you might choose the electric wheel. Great, that's what I'm gonna choose today. But also the other option, um, we do have some kick wheels. And I will have a demonstration on a kick wheel from another class, probably fifth hour or seventh hour. Let's go get some clay. Oh, before we get clay, let's get our tools. And some people might choose to get their clay first. Some people might choose to get their tools first. Um, on this counter, sorry, I left a bit of a mess. You have um, a clay bucket, which will hold water. And then you have a sink, which is where we get our water from. And some people like to run the sink. I just would say, as long as I got enough water in this bucket to kind of two inches, I should be good. Um, there's some water. I also need my four favorite tools. So um, in the assembly line moving to the right here, um, my four favorite tools are hiding in these baskets. I choose a sponge, um, which is for the water. I also choose a wooden trim tool, like a wooden um, trimming stick. And then a potter's rib. We've got miscellaneous types and sizes of these. And the last tool of my four favorite tools is a needle tool. And so it's the wooden tool with the nail kind of sticking out of the, the handle. Good for trimming and stuff like that. So I would grab my tools and then I would probably head over and claim whichever wheel you want to use. In this case, I'm going to use this electric one. So I got my tool set up. All right. Um, I'm right-handed, so typically I put all of my tools on the right side because that's my dominant side. So i um, got my tools, and then we need to get some clay. And I think I have a clay video of us wedging clay, and I had some clay that was two different colors. Um, and wedging clay is an important feature that if you don't wedge your clay, you're going to find that it's not going to be very happy being made into something on the wheel, it's gonna probably have an uneven nest to it too. So this is our table here. Um, I'm plugging up the clay from the summer. The summer clay is lazy, it dries out, it's bone dry. So I'm hydrating it and I'm adding water, I'm plugging it and I'm hydrating. So this clay that you're starting with probably is not gonna be the best clay, but um, we're not gonna probably keep a lot of this first up anyway. Um, I have the clay in here in lugs. I call these little lugs of clay. They're about a pound, pound and a half. And when you're working in a block schedule, you'll have a chance to probably throw, um, well, normally you can get one or two pieces. So I'm thinking three, four pieces. Um, usually it's like baseball. The more times you uh, swing at the ball or softball, the better odds you are hitting it. If you only get three chances, you're probably, but it's the more you practice, the better chances of um, any kind of. Um, before you start working with clay, if you do have sleeves, you probably want to roll the sleeves up. 
because I try to keep clay um, on my hands and wrists, but not up to my armpits or elbows. So roll up your sleeves. If you have a necklace or something dangling like the hoodie strings, that's a pretty good thing that's going to get caught in the uh, um, process of throwing and get dangled. If you've got long hair, put your long hair back in a ponytail. Um, if you have a wedding ring, which this is the plastic one, it's not going to harm it, but clay does get in places and it tarnishes. It's a very fine dirt and it's going to kind of ruin the, the surface. Um, when you're wedging, there's two different ways to wedge. I wedge in the spiral fashion, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're taking the clay and you're circling it around into a, a spiral cone. Um, so I'm going to press it down and I'm going to kind of lift it up and then and turn it a little bit, and then I'm going to press it down again, lift it up, turn it a little bit, and I'm just going to spiral wedge this clay. And um, I had some students working with this clay the other day, um, and they didn't complain, so it was a good sign. Sometimes the clay is too wet, too crumbly. We're kind of dialing it in, and the only way we can really get the clay machine going is if more and more students are throwing. So I'm kind of circling this into a cone. Um, it's got a point here, which kind of points to my right. And then on this side, the opposite side, there's like a little hurricane of clay that's kind of spinning around on itself. And um, how long do you wedge for? Probably just enough to kind of go around like one full cyclone cycle. Okay, if you wedge forever, it's gonna dry it out. It's gonna crumble, it's gonna crack. And I leave this with the hurricane side at the bottom um, and the cone side at the top. I kind of make it into a little gumdrop. Other videos do different things, that's fine. But what I'm doing is I'm wedging. I'm wedging the clay and I'm turning it and I'm twisting it and I'm just kind of stretching it, turning it, twisting it. It does get rid of air pockets. Our pug machine does not de-air your clay. Some have vacuums and they're nice and they're made for professional potters. Ours leaves an air pocket every so many pieces of clay. So you need to wedge it and stretch that air pocket out. And then um, you won't have the problem of having an air pouch expand and blow the floor wall off your clay. Um, you can just wedge it for a while. Uh, and once you've done that, you've taken all the platelets of clay. And I think the, the story, is, it looks like a bag of rice. All those platelets are now kind of aligned, kind of like Tetris. They're all kind of layered so that they're already in the direction that you're gonna be throwing them on the wheel. So I'm just spinning, spinning, spinning kind of a cone again, the point is here, the bottom is here, and then I'm gonna set that on the wheel. So I've got three pieces of clay. Now I'm gonna walk over this way. Are you with me? Good, good, good. Um, it's gonna be close. Okay, we made it, all right. So we're to our wheel, and I'm gonna probably adjust the camera. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna to go to the right side here. Oops. Okay, we're fine. And I may have to adjust this down a little bit. So, because I'm right-handed, um, I put all of my tools on the right side. I put all of my clay on the left side, and um, I have to put my splash guards on. And this is a big thing too. Some potter's wheels don't have splash guards. They're like a stump of wood and they kick and they just, and some are like, they're like a, like a wagon wheel and they just kind of like a, not a wagon wheel, like a um, spins yarn, one of those yarn spinners. And, and basically it just kind of goes along on a wooden block. But these splash guards will save your knees from getting um, wet down. The big one goes on towards the seat from the back and it goes underneath. It goes on the bottom. Sometimes people try to think they're going to fit over the top, and there's actually um, a little square underneath here, and then slide underneath the square. So those are underneath, they're snug as a bug. And then you can take the smaller splash guard, which has got the circles, and kind of slide it in from the side. And they kind of cinch together, kind of like Tupperware. Okay? Um, to get them off, and this I like to show this. Okay, we're getting there. Um, you know, maybe I'll have to. Can you still, okay, to get them off, they have these tabs on the side. You press them down and away. Okay. Everybody's like, I can't get my wheels off. The bell's going to ring. Just down and away. And then you can take this off of the front, pour all that stuff that might be in here, and then you got to do the twist to get this one off. 
and then pour that stuff into here as well. Some people walk them to the sink, um, but please be careful because it could spill and get all slippery. So, splash guards on, big one first on the back, and then the front one underneath on the side. Okay. One more thing about your seat, and I'm sitting on a chair. The chair actually will face, it was uncomfortable, it faces leaning forward toward your clay. So you are the boss of clay. I am leaning forward onto the clay so that my body is like, you know, the boss of it, and I have a lot of weight on it. There are some different size chairs. Uh, so some of these stools and chairs are different heights, and you might want to find one that feels good to you. You probably would not want to be sitting like way down here trying to throw up over because your arms are not going to be that strong. So having the correct height of a chair is also kind of part of getting comfortable. And you always try on clothes before you buy them, I hope. Um, the electric wheels that we have are powered by the pedal. And um, some people use the pedal um, for a little bit, like they get it to a right, the right speed. And then they, um, they kind of take that speed thing and they just kind of slide it off to the side. And if you can see that it's kind of going off to the side. And then I have a stable base, I'm punched over the clay because I'm the boss of clay. And then I'm ready to start throwing. But these wheel heads, are, are made for production and they have these little things called, I think they're like lugs or pins that are made to hold the bat onto your wheel. They will hurt your hand if you do not, if you do not know they're there, they'll, they'll scratch your knuckles and stuff. So there's little pins here. So I need to make one trip to the Batmobile and then we're ready to throw. Anybody have any questions? Any questions? Any questions? The Batmobile is usually in the center of the room. And I have to go grab it. So our bats and the Batmobile um, are plastic discs. And I'm going to grab a couple of them because I'm sure I'm going to make a mistake here. Um, the bats have the holes in them. And the bats um, just sit on the wheel head. So that way when you make something, you can just pick up the bat, um, put it into the humidity locker, or you might even put it on your shelf, depending on when you're gonna have another clay throwing studio time. I do wanna say this too, um, don't feel the stress that you have to make something. Um, before you make something or throw something on the wheel, you have to be able to center. Um, and centering is the key. So getting the skill of centering is um, pretty important. I'm gonna try to get a little better angle This is great. The laptop's got all kinds of clay fingerprints. They're dry fingerprints on it, too. Um, try not to make a huge mess. So hopefully you can see over my shoulder. Uh, again, um, there are videos that people are doing this. This is my basic 101, how to start throwing a cylinder. And a cylinder is the um, first step to this task. Um, I kind of use a little bit of my resources. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is not overdo the water and no, I'm water management. So I'm gonna take a sponge, which has two purposes, to wet down your clay and also to, um, it can pick up water, it can soak up some water if you have some water, but I'm gonna take the sponge and put that in the center, which helped me out a lot because a big time, big, if, if I'm putting clay on the bat and it's going like that, that clay is not centered, okay? That clay is like, it's gonna to wanna to go wherever it's been placed and it's gonna just lump around. So this little piece of water here is going to be the target for the bullseye. And I'm just going to place it on there. And I don't have to like super slam it, but it's just going to stay in that, that area. And it's going to be in the center of the, the bat. So we're pretty much good to go. Again, it's wedge clay. The spiral, um, the spiraling hurricane is at the bottom. And then this is at the top. Um, a lot of times when you're working with clay, um, some people use like different tools. I just kind of keep my tools off to the side. Uh, some people work with a sponge in their hand. Some people don't even use a sponge. They just use fingertips and they use drips. Um, we're going to take the clay and center it first because this clay here is 
on the wheel, but it's not centered on the bat. So it's wobbling all around. So again, a little bit of water, because um, again, my phrase is shiny clay is happy clay. A um, little bit of water, and then I'm gonna use my right hand, my, my hand, and it's gonna basically press it down onto the bat first, down, 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 and then I'm gonna slowly drag my hand down, 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 down to the side, off to the side. So I start on the top, and then I slowly work my way down, 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 down the side, okay? It's gonna fight me the whole time, but I'm gonna give it gentle, gradual force, and I'm also gonna give it a little water. Shiny clay is happy clay, and I'm gonna lean on the clay. I might even have to growl. This clay is kind of dry. So the bumping and the, the uh, wobbling is gonna go away to the center of it, and I'm using this part of my hand. I don't know if you can see the part. I'm not using any of my fingertips. My left hand is like just sort of steady, but my right hand is the fourth hand. So a little bit of water, which repeat, gradually leaning on the clay. I have my elbows on my legs. Some potters say that you should put your um, elbow on, on your belt loop or your pocket because you're using a lot of your body to just basically lean on it and force it into one steady, steady place. Okay. Just like that. Now, from about a minute ago when this clay was wobbling all around, I've, I've done some even gradual force. I may have even forced some of that bad clay, the unbalanced clay, at the bottom. And I trimmed that clay off with my thumb, just the back of my thumb. And I kind of put that in the blue bucket to go into the white bucket for later on. Because if the clay is not going to balance, um, it's not going to play. All right, so it goes for a swim. Then um, once this clay is centered and it's in its place, it's pretty much good to go. Um, I'm going to center it again, but I'm just going to keep the, the pattern going. If the clay is wobbling, it may take you a few more times to kind of get it to hold still. But once the clay is centered and it's, it's staying in one place, the next task would be to open the clay. And to open the clay, you've got to open it from the top with force. Um, and what I typically do for my technique is I take my thumb and I kind of lean my rest my hand against the clay, and I press down onto the, uh, the very top of the clay. So the clay has got like a little dimple in there. It holds a little bit of water. Okay, so there's a little bit of water on top. That's the very top open part. I do this holding onto the clay so I'm not just kind of like randomly guessing where that is. I want to make sure that it's balanced right in the center and it's pressed on the very top. And then I can begin to open the clay using your index finger, some people use their pinky finger, some people use their thumbs, the videos are different. Um, you're going to have to just have steady gradual force to press down and probably shorter fingernails. So if you are a person that has large, long, gorgeous fingernails, you may want to uh, trim them down. I did go to college with some girls who were, they were great at throwing, but they would always throw with like different parts of their fingers. But they had fingernails out here and they were they would still throw, it was like crazy. And then they do knuckle bolts. So their fingers would be in here, they would use their knuckles instead of using their fingerprints. Um, so you adapt. So the clay is gonna be opened up. I have to open this down, down, down towards the center. Realizing clay is like a rubber band, it's gonna give at some point and it's not gonna go um, so far stretched before it snaps. Um, I've pressed it down and it may look like it's wobbling a little bit, but the bats are kind of they're, they're a little bit loose. So I've gone down to the very bottom of where I think this volcano um, is. It's got a lot of water in there. So I'm gonna remove the water. I'm gonna stop the wheel. And then I'm gonna use the needle tool to kind of measure how thick the floor is. Because I don't wanna make it super duper thin. I'm gonna press that needle tool right through the bottom. And I'm hoping for like just about half of a needle tool. So that way um, I got a little bit of clay to work with at the floor and it's not so thick that it um, blows up. The hole in the clay will actually fill in with slurry and slip and it won't even exist. So now that I know my floor is as um, thick as I want it, I'm gonna now take and drag that little small dance floor a little bit taller. And if you hear that noise, it's kind of the bat shifting on the wheel. And it's really, it's kind of annoying, but it's really only temporary. Uh, from the, um, Center of the floor, I'm dragging it outwards, and I'm slowly dragging or just kind of increasing the opening. Um, not increasing the opening, increasing the floor and leaving the opening. 
in that size. So it kind of looks like a little uh, short mushroom. And once it's open to where I think I need it, I'm going to now, um, thinking of it as 4 o'clock, and again, always shiny clay is happy clay, and I'm not trying to super duper hose this down so I have a, a garden hose mess here. Um, I'm going to try to grab the wall, and I'm going to press um, outwards from the inside with this particular finger, and then I'm going to press inward from the outside and drag the clay up a little bit taller. I'm not pinching, even though it technically looks like a pinch. You know, when you pinch somebody, I'm pinching um, with a drag to go up above and below. And I'm just kind of taking a little bit of that clay a little bit taller. Um, I went about that far. A little bit of water again, pressing in from the outside, out from the inside. And I'm slowly dragging that clay a little bit taller. Okay. Now, a big trick is sometimes the lip the top part will probably crack or break because you're moving it too fast. And a hint there is to take a little bit of water and just compress the lip down a little bit. That helps those platelets of clay stay together and not stretch apart and break like a rubber band. So I'm just uh, starting at the bottom, down in the basement. I'm pressing in from the outside and dragging, uh, pressing out from the inside and dragging uh, like a little wave of the ocean of clay up, up, up the wall. Okay, to make a simple cylinder. Um, there are other forms um, that you could be making, but the first task I would think is for us to make simple cylinders that say, I can center. And I'm just going to try to drag this up one more pull, and I'm good to go. Okay, um, once I get to the top, I'm going to compress it down a little bit, and I think um, <laughs> it looks pretty, pretty good. Now, um, the sponge, if there's a lot of water in here, I can go in here with the sponge and try to soak up some of that water. Um, because what water will do over time is it'll soak through your clay wall and it'll it'll just like erode your floor. And so you don't wanna have water in this. Um, but you'll notice too, there's a lot of clay down here that I probably don't need. So that's where my other tools will come in. Um, thinking that I haven't used my trim tool yet, so I'm gonna have to use my trim tool. But I'm thinking that if I wanted to make the walls Look a little bit smoother. I could use this um, edge of the potter's rib to kind of shape the body or the base of the clay. And I could take out all of those things if I wanted. So it'd be kind of completely a smooth surface um, with this potter's rib. If you were creating other shapes, you can find some other parts of the rib to kind of go in and create some things. Some people like to have the fingerprints on here, so you can kind of leave the fingerprints. Smooth is a good start. But later on, if you want to do some banding or you want to do some like water parks for the glaze, the glaze would appreciate that. It's kind of up to you. Then, um, almost done with this piece, you'll notice that at the bottom, there's a lot of clay that I couldn't reach. And that's typically where projects blow up. And that's typically why I don't fire some projects is because this clay down here, which makes it look heavy and very um, attached to the bat, has to be gone. It's good to hold it there, but I'm going to do two um, things with this trim tool. I'm going to hold it with two hands because otherwise it could go flying out of my hand. I'm going to just get a grip on here and I'm going to go in at a 45 degree angle first and take that clay that's kind of not balanced anyways. And I'm going to just slowly and steady press in at a 45 degree bevel angle to reduce that part of the clay cylinder either. Tell the Till the bat is on the, and then I'm gonna undercut this from the bottom. So those both meet. And then from the um, opposite side of the pointed side, I think I can just go in here and kind of grab this clay here, which is not really attached anything. And I can kind of say, thank you for playing. But that clay there is probably a good reason why um, a lot of your projects may blow up in the process. Uh, what do I do with this clay? Put it in the bucket. Save it for the white bucket. Um, the bottom part here is actually um, kind of rough. So I'm going to take my sponge and smooth it out a little bit. And um, I'm going to call that kind of a complete cylinder. Okay. So you can kind of see that that is lightened up considerably at the bottom. And it's probably going to um, survive the firing process. Now, um, can I make another one? Of course I can. This clay here, I'm going to just set off to the side. <coughs> Yeah.
and I'll do a restart with this. My hands are still messy, so I don't want to like make a huge mess. Um, but I do want to start again. If I were going to go wedge clay right now, I would be wedging all this slime and slurry into the clay. So it's important that you're not wedging clay with like grimy, slimy hands because even a little bit of water would cause your clay to not be as strong. So I'm just going to um, take my messy hands and take another piece of clay, kind of put it in the center. I guess I could. So again, that's kind of where I'm aiming for. You don't need a lot of water, just a little bit. This is the hurricane bottom right on the top. And I just want to attach it like a suction cup so that we're set. Okay. I'm going to throw this one. Uh, then I'm going to clean up, but then I'm going to throw again. But because I think if I show you two of these, I think you should be able to go from here. Again, this clay is not centered, but it's wedge. It's a good start. And once it's bumping around here, I've got to be the boss of clay. So what I'm going to do... Um, again, adjust yourself and kind of get comfortable. Um, put a little bit of water on the clay and then pressing down first. My first force is pressing it down onto the bat and then I'm using the heel of my hand to kind of like form it into that shape. So pressing down, pressing down, pressing down. And then slowly my right hand is moving down, 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 and down to the bat. Okay, so my hand starts up here at the top at four o'clock. I guess if this is 12, this is six. I kind of work at four o'clock. Like this is where a lot of my work is done, even when I'm throwing. I kind of have that force here and I slowly move that force down, 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 down the side. And I manage the water. If the clay tugs at me, I have to add a little bit more water. If the, the clay is like spitting because it's slurry, it's too much water, I have to take a little water away. So leaning on it, pressing down, 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 gradual, even force. Hold still, hold still, hold still. It's moving a little bit slow, so I'm gonna kind of bump the speed up a little bit. Okay, so you can kind of see. Down, 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 hold still. Sometimes you have to growl, okay? So you have to growl the clay, you're the boss of clay. I'm getting a lot of slurry here, which I'm just gonna put in the bucket, because that'll go into the white bucket. Try to keep your clay from your wrist outward. Um, if it does go on your clothes, it does not stain. I'm holding the clay still and I'm pressing it down, down, down the side. So we want this clay to have a nice smooth fingerprint ride all the way down the side. If down here this clay is like not playing nice, I just trim it off a little bit. Not much, I just use the back of my thumb and holding it still. Okay, and you'll see like people centering, they'll say well, you can wedge the clay on the on the wheel. So you just you flatten the cone and then you bring the cone back up, you know. So you just and this takes a lot of work. This is like you know, fitness center. So I'm taking the clay and I'm I'm pushing it down and bringing it back up. But that's another way of kind of keeping the clay platelets in line. What you gotta watch out for, it's very hard to open clay when this clay here is doing things like this here, okay? When it, when the clay is wobbling all over the place and you're, you're like, it's like, whoa, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to shape that wall and deform that wall. So when it's bumping all around like this, you've gotta go back and just make sure you get it as smooth and as centered as possible. How much pressure? Gradual, even pressure with a little bit of water. And um, it takes experience and it takes practice. And it's a little bit of water management too, okay? Um, I don't think I'm the cleanest person, but I just hate making a mess because it takes me forever to clean up a mess. So once this is centered, going back to the, the checklist, um, centered clay, open clay. So I kind of give it a little hand hug and then I press my dimple onto the top and then um, press in that opening. Now some people use different appendages, that's fine, but eventually it's gonna run out of water, so you're gonna need a little bit more water. Um, you measure the floor with your needle tool or what some, some people do is they'll go like this and they'll take and they'll, they'll freeze their hand and then they'll put their hand over here on the side and they'll see that there's about that much space between their hand being frozen in the clay and then 
So they'll be able to kind of gauge how much distance is between their fingertips and the tip of their thumb. Um, either way, you don't want to have a funnel and you kind of want to have a little bit of clay to work with. So um, I'm not going to measure this, even though I probably could. But as you learn the thicknesses, you should be good to go. I know I need to go a little bit further, so I'm going to drag that floor a little bit down as I open up the floor, and then I'm just going to kind of make that simple, steady volcano. Mm -hmm. Okay. So shiny clay is happy clay, and I'm dragging that floor out, and I'm slowly bringing that clay upwards, too. And um, if you go too far, the clay is going to break, and then you just have to restart. Not a big deal. As you start moving, don't move a whole lot at the first because you're asking a lot of clay to go uh, a long distance. So just start out with small directional pulls for the wall. And as you kind of get the clay thinner, it will probably move a lot farther, a lot faster. Keeping in mind, my hands are always kind of working in tandem and linked together. All right. Another one here. And if you can see that surfboard or surfing wave going up and up the walls, you're set. Once you get to the lip, you might want to press it down. Um, I think I might show another demo of like different forms of the clay or different parts of the clay, like a neck and a shoulder. But right now, all I want to do is start you with simple cylinders, throw a couple of them, and then I'll show you how to clean up. And there'll be another video for that probably later on. Um, how tall does it have to be? I would say if your cylinder is as tall as your fingers, that's a good start. Okay. You don't have to make the super tallest cylinder unless you have a lot of experience. Making a cylinder about the height of your um, index or naughty finger or yeah, the middle finger, um, that's fine too. There will be a point where the walls are going to be so thin that they're going to actually collapse. But we'll get to that point a little bit later on. You don't know where the line is unless you cross it. And there's always a pug machine so you can make some more clay. And so I have this, I think it's set to go. The lip looks pretty good, a basic cylinder. Um, now I need to lighten up that suction cup of clay. This is probably where I throw the clay. I mean, you can see the profile of this, well, maybe not so well, but there's so much clay down here at the foot, um, the wall, and it's that's where, if you cut this off of here with a wire tool, it's, it's just so much places for water to hide, and then the water will probably not want to leave. Um, so I've got to remove that clay. 45 degree at 4 o'clock, and I'm just going to steady, 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 press down through. And then I'm going to undercut that kind of hula hoop of clay. Um, I use the backside. I call it the grabbing side. It's kind of like a, a grabber. Now, yeah, that's, that's a lot of clay. So all this clay goes into the blue bucket to go into the white bucket in the sink. And then I have just um, aesthetically, that's almost too much. I don't know if you can tell how much I've taken off that cylinder, but all that clay uh, didn't need to be there. So I've made a couple of cylinders. Now, typically, you'll have 90 minutes. I would say if you get a couple cylinders, great. If you don't get a couple cylinders, that's OK. Just post what you have and make comments. Um, the plan now is to probably begin cleaning up. What if you don't use this piece of clay? Um, we'll put it away in the pug machine, and that's kind of what I need to start doing now. So this clay here, I'm just going to set aside. And I'm going to grab a towel. Not that I have a whole bunch of towels around here, but I have to adjust the uh, I have to adjust the camera so you can kind of see the cleanup zone. Um, this is a messy wheel, and so if this wheel is what you're working with, um, I'm just cleaning up my hands so I can actually adjust some of the things. The first thing I'm going to do 
And it depends. I guess I'm going to do the first thing, but you might do it last. There's probably three things you got to clean up. The first thing is the splash guards. Second thing would be like your tools. And the last thing is kind of the surface. And it's like putting everything away. So if you did get clay around some other places, um, you just take a sponge and attack it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take my splash guards off and um, clean up my splash guards. Some of you will choose to do your tools first. So go right to the sink with your tools. But this is what's in my splash guards that splashed off the wheel head. And that goes into the bucket. And I do the twist. And I got this clay as well. You might have chunks of clay in here. Okay. Maybe something happened and you got like chunks of clay in here. You know, all those chunks of clay, what I usually do is I just take those chunks of clay and I put them into your bucket. So that way they're, they're kind of set. Um, this is not clean. So I'm going to go to the sink and I'm going to clean those. And then um, I'm going to probably clean up those second. But when I go to the sink to clean my splash guards and give them a quick rinse, um, I'm going to bring back a sponge to kind of get some of the clay off of here. So um, let's go to the sink. So either the left or the right side of the sink, um, we do have these two that you can kind of scrub around here. But usually if it's just water, you can take a water rinse. Rinse it on the splash guard. Rinse it on the other splash guard. As I'm doing this rinse, just grab a sponge and you're not really cleaning the splash guard like you're gonna eat off it like a plate, but just give it a quick little rinse. I wanna get the other one with a little rinse. So they're basically rinsed and they're very wet. We don't really dry these, but these are good to go um, back to the... I'm also going to take this sponge and kind of help my hands out a little bit. Um, it will dry out your hands. So you'll notice that clay actually pulls oils from your skin, the exact opposite of plasticina clay, which makes you kind of feel a little bit greasier, I guess. Um, but I'm going to take some of those things and then I'm going to head back over to the sink and grab my tools. Turn these, I'll grab over to the wheel and I'll return to the sink. So, um, if there's on the floor, boom, I just rip off the floor. Power goes off and then I just do a quick, like sponge around the wheel. Um, I let my tools down here on the side. So like right here, I would just make them like this. And we call that clean. So what was on the wheels? So now I'm going to take the splash guards, leave them here. So my wheel is pretty clean. And then I'm gonna go deal with the tools and the slop in the bucket. And um, the last thing I'll do is clean up my um, extra clay. So here we go back to the sink again. It'll take you two trips. Um, and this is again, this is a social distance thing. So. So when we clean up, we're not going to have 12 people at the sink. Um, we're going to have to kind of clean up in stages. And I'm not sure how long it's taken me out to watch the video. But all of the stuff in this bucket goes into the white bucket. Um, some people like to use the water to hydro clean it. You just have to get the big chunks. And I put this stuff into the white bucket because this white bucket actually catches clay and it doesn't let any clay go into the pipes and clog the sink. So all of the um, clay chunks are in the bucket and those things are important to the clay. It basically has good bacteria in it and those things will actually go into the pug machine and it'll cause your clay to become a lot more workable in the future. So. Um, I think I need to clean my tools next. I'm just going to go and give the tools a little bit of a rinse. Okay. 
um, from 2017. You know, they go into the basket over here where the tools go. Um, sponges will go into the sponge basket next to it. Um, I guess if I wanted to, I could sponge off the rest of the wheel, but I don't think I need to. The bucket goes upside down with its friends here. And then my hands are still a little bit dirty, but I'm not completely done yet. The last thing I would do is just to make sure that this is cleaned up, I would take this clay, or you might have some other clay that probably didn't work out for you. Let's say there was a project that fell apart. So that project became all, you know, chunks and pieces or whatever. I got to show you where that goes um, in the kiln row. So let's go this way. I think we can fit through. Uh, roll with me here. Oh, I guess I forgot something else too. I better do something with those because those aren't going to stay there the entire day. Um, the clay recycling happens back over here into the kiln room um, where we have our pug machine. And um, this appliance here is soaking up clay from the past summer. And so this is kind of the mixing clay. I will open it up. Usually it's left over. You just put your clay in here. The clay we have is really dry, so I've been kind of trying to hydrate the clay over the first couple of weeks. And then basically, I always just mix up the clay from here as well. So that's where your clay gets recycled to. And um, just about done. I'm gonna talk about the humidity locker. The humidity locker here, um, I'm not sure how well it's gonna work with the block schedule, but this is a like closet that we would use to store our clay in. So typically you could put your clay products in here but you probably want to put your initials on them so we know that this belongs to you and not to someone else. And this is a locker that kind of holds moisture. And I would take the projects that I made and um, put them in here, typically overnight. Um, unfortunately, overnight in a block schedule world could be from Thursday to Monday, which is overnight. So I don't know how well this is going to work with the humidity. We may have to do plastic bags work out from there. Um, did want to show you one more thing, wire tool, because that's one of the tools as well. Um, last thing. Um, so if you have a clay project and where are the wire tools? I have the wire tools by the sink. Actually, on top of the sink. The reason being, if we have like 12 wire tools, um, the tool's got the wire um, with the wooden handle. Um, this will, usually I do this on the second day because on the first day, if you wire tool it off and you try to move your project, your project becomes less than round again. And so it's kind of like, oh, I guess I want it to be an oval. But the wire tool um, also um, is a second day thing. What you're looking for in this, and this is just my example one, which I'm not gonna have you Years apart, but you notice how it's pencil thin. But what happens here at this corner where the floor meets the wall? It's a little bit thick yet, isn't it? So that's kind of the thing we're looking at is trying to get your walls as you do this to kind of stay with the same consistency. Um, and this clay I will put into the uh, the pug machine, and it'll be the next um, clay from there. So the humidity locker is here. We're going to try to give that a go. I think I'm pretty much done with the examples I had for you. And um, my wheel is clean. The next person comes in. They don't have to deal with any tools. The power's off. Um, should be good to go. Also, wanted to talk to you a little bit about right-handedness because most of our wheels here in America are made for right-handed people. If you're in Europe, I guess their wheels go like, not counterclockwise, they go clockwise. So, um, I would maybe even suggest trying a kick wheel because the kick wheels over there, these kick wheels have the ability to you power them. And they're not going to be electric. They can go both directions. It's kind of up to you. So um, that's probably a long time, but I'm going to stop recording and uh, maybe ask if there are any questions. I'm 
expecting some questions and I'm going to do a few more of these videos just so you kind of know where things are at. But I think you can probably be independent and um, kind of work on your own um, after watching some videos. It is going to take some practice. All right. We got a Wi-Fi issue with Christoph. I get that. No problem. I will fill you in. So if you couldn't stay with the video, I hope this recorded. I'm going to probably record another couple of them, actually on a kick wheel too. So you can kind of pick and choose. Um, I'm excited. I'm kind of frustrated because I'm not going to be able to like help you as close as I would. But um, I'm curious to just see what you can do independently when, again, you walk in and you have this as an option. We'll work on scheduling it for social distance as well. But um, I am going to stop the recording and thank you. And then I'm also going to just do a question-answer breakout session that I could probably um, use later on. Stop.